Hi guys, nothing to prove here. Today's a beautiful day, because any day one can be out and about on two wheels is a beautiful day. But today is an extra special day because it was back in 1938 that Triumph attached Speed Twin to two cylinders between two wheels and called it that in 1938. And in 19, or in 2019, the all new, they are trying to take you back to that time. I get it, Triumph. And I think you've hit the mark. Uh, when you ride this bike, it feels uh, not classic. It feels older than that. It feels almost antique. Uh, over a half a century old is what this bike feels. But yeah, you have the modern things on it. Oh, and also, uh, Triumph said, uh, if you look at their online catalog, they have over 70 different options you can put on this particular bike. You know, from knee pads to billet uh, foot pegs to engine embellishers. What's an em engine embellisher? Bling. <laughs> For lack of a better word, bling. Uh, to you could you could uh, put the aluminum brushed aluminum on the headlights. Oh, this, and blinkers you could shrink them down to a little size. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't want to talk about all of them, but I hope you guys stick around and enjoy the ride as we go over these features and options. Okay guys, you know I like to do a ride by in all my videos to show you what this looks like. I'm about five foot 10, uh, 176 centimeters. And this seat height, as you can see, my, my feet are a little bit tucked because the seat height is, one, is 807 millimeters off the ground. So if you're coming from the Bonneville T120, your foot is a little bit back and a little bit up from there, just a little bit. Not quite to the Thruxton R, but it's getting there. Um, but it was kind of nice sitting there. It's easy. My inseam's 32 inch, and yeah, you could stretch out your legs and put your heels on the ground is what I was doing at stoplights with this. No problem touching the ground with this bad boy, that's for sure. Okay, let's get up close and personal in 4K with this bike. And let's see what this thing looks like up close with all these aluminum accents and everything. Okay, let's switch around here. Oh, look at that. That's gorgeous. Already in, the, in this basic model Speed Twin, it really doesn't need to be blinged out. It's already pretty blingy to me. I mean, you start at the rear here, the uh, fender is aluminum. Then the swing arm is aluminum, then to the ankle protector, then you go up here to the uh, the, the fake looking carburetor, uh, you know, and then also the gas cap too. Uh, and then down to the exhaust. Look at that bad boy. Oh yeah, goes all the way down and around. I love that look. Now we have the T120 Bonneville HP motor, yeah, which is in the Thruxton R. So we're talking 96 ponies at just below seven grand. Uh, and 112 newton meters of torque, just below five grand. Uh, and as we move up to the front, you can really see that aluminum fender there. Yeah, that looks that brushed aluminum. They nailed it there, Triumph. Good job. And yes, your four piston fixed brumbles there on 305 millimeter discs. And the suspension, no, it's not adjustable, but you don't really need to adjust it. There was really no need for that. And as we pan back here, as I already mentioned, the aluminum swing arm, and yes, the twin forks. They're preload adjustable only, uh, and 120 millimeters of travel, and then a 220 millimeter disc with two piston Nissan, Nissan uh, pistons there, uh, or uh, caliper. And you guys know I like to step back and take a look. Look at how sleek and slim this parallel twin looks. And you can see just barely the the headers coming off. I hope the, the the Osmo Pocket picks that up. And this tank is a two hundred is a fourteen point and a half liter tank, 
uh, which this bike weighs in at uh, 196 kilos dry and fully wet, so we, you do the math and everything else, around 206, 207 kilos, which is great. Nice lightweight. And you can see the cap pulls up right there like that. And then you can see there, up to the handlebar where it says the speed twim. Nice job there, coming over here to the controls very basic very simple yeah you're gonna hear me saying that a lot on this bike because that's what triumph was going for again the controls on the right side very basic very simple and we go up to the to the layout of the instrument yeah just two that's it speed rpm that's all you need your standard idiot lights and then you can choose what you want to see here and on the odometer and so on and, and what mapping modes you want to be in you know whether it's rain road sport mode and so on which which i liked rain mode the most uh as far as mapping modes here um the street mode was a little on throttle was okay the off throttle was a little jerky and then sport mode Sport mode just did not fit the characteristic of this motorcycle Triumph. I don't know what you were trying to do with that. But quick fix, simple, just leave it in rain mode. Then everything's smooth on and off. And then when it rains, you don't care. Just You don't have to change the mapping. Just leave the mapping 100% of the time in rain mode. It does not change the power at all. It's just very smooth in the power delivery. And that's what I like. Okay, so maybe you go out riding with some sport bike guys. This won't keep up with them, no. Uh, but then put it over to sport mode and then you can try to pretend to be like them. <laughs> okay, guys, let's get off down the road. Man, uh, come on, son, come out. Uh, let's get off down the road and see what this bike feels like with its uh, uh, powertrain, the chassis, and the ergonomics. And I already told you a little bit about the ergonomics and how that feels. Okay, let's gear up. Okay guys, it looks like the sun eh, wants to come out, but the clouds... Oh, gorgeous bike there, Triumph. Oh, I like it. Oh, nice view. <laughs> yeah. Key to heated gloves is turning them on ahead of time. As I said in my last review with the Triumph Scrambler. But this looks good. Oh, there we go. Snapshot. I like that view. That's a nice view, Triumph. Good job, Triumph. Okay, let's get off down the road, shall we? Let's turn you on. And, all right. Let's go out down the road, shall we? All right. Of course, no cars coming. And the visor down. Oh, this, this bike is just comfortable. It fits me like a glove. The only thing is if you have an inseam longer than 32 inches, I can see how some of you guys might be a little cramped. Just a little cramped on this. Not a lot, just a little. The in-town streetability of this bike is is just a piece of cake. This is this is uh, with with a 1200 cc bike. It doesn't get much simpler than this, guys. Really, it doesn't. This is so easy. It's it's like I'm on a bicycle. Almost. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> but once you get up to 50 kilometers, it's, it's very comfortable with being in fourth gear at 50 kilometers per hour. Just this putt, 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 putt at 23, 2400 RPMs, it loves it. No problem whatsoever. 
So this powertrain, let's talk about that. Uh, with the suction R motor mated to this chassis, I, I actually like it. I like it really, really well, actually. It's, it's just so smooth. It's, look at that, just, oh yeah. No complaints. No complaints about this powertrain whatsoever, guys. This powertrain is seamless. You can, you can, you can blip her up and down, no problem. But that's almost sacrilege on this bike. Because <laughs> why would you do that? Then, then you're riding this more like a sport bike, which this has Ferrari Diablo Rosso 3s on. Yeah. So with the Rosso 3s on, this thing does perform. It actually performs very well. Oh yeah, this bike is easy, guys. If, if you want a modern classic that, uh, that just is just easy to ride, this be the bike. Yeah, so you're getting two thumbs up from me, Triumph, on this powertrain. Cannot complain. You've, you've hit the mark right on the head. You, you've, you've hit the target. No complaints whatsoever. Now, the chassis, even though it's a non-adjustable front and only adjustable for preload in the rear, there's still no complaints. You can get over pretty good on these Russell 3 tires. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, this, this thing will get down and boogie, no problem. If you want to boogie, this will boogie. <laughs> So the chassis, I'll give it a thumb and a half. Good job, Triumph. You, you don't need adjustable forks for this. Now the ergonomics. It is your standard riding position. You are square, except uh, your knees are a little more bent than say on like your Suzuki Bandits, uh, your, Super, your KTM Super Duke R1290s. Um, that's because the seat heights are a little higher there for those bikes. And so it's a give and a take. You want a lower seat height, more comfortable ride, well then you're going to be a little more tough. Because you really don't want those foot pegs to drag. And that's the only alternative to having a low seat height, to have low pegs. But then your pegs are dragging. But ergonomically speaking, this, this, it really does feel like I'm on a bike from 1938 with all the modern amenities. Good job on doing that Triumph. You're getting two thumbs for that from me. Alright guys, after riding this bike today, I think I understand what Triumph was trying to do with this bike. It's not really a retro bike. It's not really a modern classic bike. Um, I, I would actually characterize it as a bike that knows it's over a half a century old, well, eight, eight, eight decades old, 1938. Um, it knows that. And it says, I'm not trying to be retro. I'm not trying to be modern classic. I am who I am, period. That's what this bike says to me. And if you guys want that unique riding pleasure, that uniqueness, and this is the bike for you. Go up to your local Triumph dealership, take it for a spin. Um, be careful though, bring your wallet because you're gonna want to put some money down and get one. Um, <laughs> like the power, in rain mode, Triumph. Why did you put sport mode on here? It does not fit the characteristic of this bike. But if you guys, if you're feeling that sporty aggressive feel on this bike, which I never did, so I wouldn't understand why, you would use sport mode, uh, but if you did, it's there. Just look at it that way. It's an option. If you want to ride aggressive, ride with sport bike guys, then it's there. But other than that, the non-adjustable front suspension didn't need to be adjusted. Rear only adjust for preload. I'm 82 kilos, 180-ish pounds. Didn't need to touch it. Um, yeah. This bike gets two thumbs up from me, Triumph. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the review. And as always, ride safe and ride 
like there's nothing to prove. Cheers.